What's up, Vital Community? It's your boy, Chris. Or as those of you who uh, follow me over from Instagram or subscribe to my channel here on YouTube, know me as that tunes from the Man Cave. This is my entry video for Bill from the Vinylverse for his Through the Years 300 Subscribers competition. Uh, first of all, um, Bill, congratulations on the 300 subs, buddy. I love your channel. Um, you've always got crazy knowledge. I really love watching your videos. I recommend them to my friends. Great stuff. You and I are around about the same level of subscribers, so it's kind of one of those things where I kind of feel like maybe you and I kind of came up through the ranks together as we were. You probably have more than me now. I don't know. I don't really pay attention, but uh, congratulations. A toast to you. And uh, hopefully I see you at 500 and 1,000 and 10,000. Any level of subscribers you get, any number of subscribers you get wouldn't be enough, buddy. Really like your channel. All right, so... <clears throat> I must admit, going in, a little disclaimer, Bill, I kind of cheated a little bit. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, the point of this video, of this challenge, is to pick four meaningful years from your life and pick an album from that year or a song from that year. The only problem with that is, is I'm 34 years old and I don't like much music that came out after 1995. Not much. And obviously being 34 years old means that most of the music I was most influenced by is going to come out after 1995. And so I always dug deep further. The, the music I was inspired by was Paul McCartney and Wings, was Journey, was The Eagles, was The Drifters, was, you know, Michael Jackson and Prince. And that's what I grew up with in my house. I didn't really start getting music that was modern to my time until I got my first job, got my own money, and started buying my own stuff when I was 14. So by then, you're talking late 90s. And I liked, really liked, you know, the music in that range for a few years, and then after that, it's just... But nothing I can think of from a couple of these years. A couple of these years are going to be pretty close, and then a couple of them just, no. All right. So, Bill, please forgive me for cheating. What I did decide to do, though, was for each year of significance that I have chosen... I have chosen an album that is significant to me at that point in time of my life. And maybe a reason why. Because I like to tell stories, as those of you who subscribe to my channel know. So, I hope you forgive me. I hope you still count my entry bill. Amazing idea. I just wish I was a little older, so maybe I could have... <laughs> maybe I could have threw some more albums in from some of these years. Um, but anyway, diving right on in. I don't want to waste too much of your time. Uh, first year of significance I have chosen is 1999. Um, 1999, 14 going on 15 years old at that time in the state of South Carolina, you could have a learner, learner's permit at that age. Restriction, had to drive with an adult of a certain age. Um, coming up time, I could smell that learner's permit coming. I'd always wanted to drive. I'd always wanted my own car. So I started talking to my dad about it. And my dad, as I'm so excited, basically just cuts me off and says, son, if you want a car, go to work, pay for it. Okay. Not an easy task for a 14 year old, but I started calling anybody who would listen. I started picking up the phone, calling everybody. And a lot of people would basically hang up on me when I got to 14. Oh, how old are you? 14. Um, we're sorry. We don't hire that young and cut me off. But I got one local restaurant to tell me, hey, they didn't ask how old I was, and that was one of those things. I didn't volunteer that information because I had a feeling I'd get cut off. What I was trying to do was get myself in the door. I'm like, if they'll let me in the door, I've always been able to talk my way into a lot of things. Like, if they'll let me in the door, I think I can talk them into the job. And not to mention, at 14, I was about six foot, about a buck 85. So, kind of stalled out after that. But anyway, so I looked older than I was, and I've been shaving since I was 12. This wasn't difficult. <laughs> um, so it wasn't difficult at all. I, I walked in, met the owner, shook his hand. He asked me, when can I start? I said, when do you need me to start? He said, can you start tomorrow? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Minimum wage was $5.15 an hour in 1999 when I went to work. Uh, busted tables about 30 hours a week. Gradually made my way into the kitchen. Never did get a raise at this job, but $5.15 an hour. 
was the greatest thing in the world to me at that time because it enabled me to save up enough money to buy my first car, cash money. 1994 Pontiac Grand Am that I bought, $3,000 cash money. I blew the engine in it because, damn it, I didn't check the oil in it and stuff like that like I should have. But that's not the point. It's one of the greatest memories of my life. It's one of my proudest achievements and accomplishments. And it's something that I believe this generation has definitely missed out on and continues to miss out on. But anyway, so an album significant at that time. Something that I can remember listening to in that very first car frequently. And it didn't come out in 1999. It came out in 1996. But I was still knee deep in it by the time I started driving. And of course, it wasn't vinyl because no record players in uh, Pontiac Grand Ams. It was the CD version of this extended EP. Tupac, How Do You Want It, extended single, maxi single. It's got How Do You Want It on it, California Love, Two of America's Most Wanted, and hit them up. And I played the piss out of it. I mean, I played it constantly. And this record was like 10 bucks. And when I found it, I, I about pooped myself because I just could not believe that it just threw me back to that CD and that Grand Am and that place in time. And if that's not an album of significance for a year, then I don't know what is. Um, so yeah, how do you want it? Maxi single. Very, very proud of that accomplishment of my life. 1999 is one of the big years of my life. I went to work. I haven't stopped. <laughs> I paid for my first car. Been driving ever since. Never needed a ride to or from work. Very proud of that as well. But, um, man, I played the ever-living hell out of this CD. Hope I get rid of some of that glare. All right. Next year's significance I've chosen. I've always had very eclectic tastes, as those of you who follow my Instagram account for a few years can, can attest to. And some of you who've maybe watched a few of my entry-level giveaways can attest to. Some of you who, um, who have only watched you know, some of my main videos would be like, this guy doesn't like anything to jazz, but not true. 2003. 2003 is the year I graduated high school. And I can remember being knee-deep. In the King George Strait. I was knee deep in the King George Strait for a good portion of my life. But 2003 specifically. Man. I, George was always in the CD player. Six CD changer. I always had four of them would be George. And like two of them would be like whatever hip hop was, was popular at the time. But this is George Strait Greatest Hits Volume 2. This is George Strait's Greatest Hits Volume 1. Talking about some of my all time favorite songs guys. Unwound, if you're thinking you want a stranger, there's one coming home, Foolhearted Memory, Amarillo by Morning, A Fire I Can't Put Out, You Look So Good in Love was probably my favorite, was probably my favorite song, period, at the time, for several reasons, um, round about that time, I had, I had fallen in love for the first time, now I never even think about this girl, <laughs> but isn't that what life and growing up's all about, um, I was in love for the first time. I loved her. She didn't love me back. That's 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 it. Not trying to get sad or sappy. It worked out for the best. But uh, I was head over heels. She really liked me, but she saw me as a brother or friend. And, you know, she was seeing this other guy. She, start, she broke up with me, started seeing this other guy. She was, oh, my God, happy, ecstatic. They're married now. They have two daughters. And fun story is, is she is my sister-in-law's sister. So I still see her all the time. I still see her at family functions, my nieces, my, my two nieces and my nephew's birthday, um, all the time. And now it's funny how it worked out. It worked out the best for me. I couldn't possibly be happier and it worked out the best for her. She couldn't possibly be happier. And between the two of us, we have three beautiful daughters with the person that we love the most. And life works out that way. I thought it was the worst thing in the world at the time. But you look so good in love. The point of the song is basically, the point is, is that he's in love with this woman, but she doesn't love him back. And now he sees her in love with another person, even though it's not him. And it's just a comment that he's, he's happy basically to see her in love himself, like even if it's not with him. And that song meant so much to me around about that time. Not quite as much now because I'm with the person I love the most. 
But at the time, wow. Okay, next one up, 2011. 2011 is the year I got married uh, to my beautiful wife. Uh, I was 26 years old. Um, up until that point, the greatest day of my life. Uh, I'm sure you guys can guess what comes next. But round about that time is around about the time that I was delving into jazz a little. I'd only heard a little jazz. But what I heard I really liked. First jazz album I ever heard was A Love Supreme. From A Love Supreme, I went to Blue Train um, and Kind of Blue. And from there, I went to John Coltrane's Giant Steps. Now, this is the third mono press. And you can eat off of it. It is gorgeous. I love it. All right, now what's significant about this in particular and why I started you know, really listening to this so much is at the time, John Coltrane had written a beautiful composition called Naima about his first wife. And it's beautiful. And when I listened to it, it just made me think, man, if I had any talent or musical ability at all and could write anything at all, I wish I could have written this for my wife. Because I just listen to it and think, man, this man loves this woman. He loves this woman. I wish I had the ability to write something like that for my wife. I wish I did. And now plenty of wonderful love songs have been written by many soul and R&B artists and, you know, just any kind of genre really throughout the years. But just something about that composition, no words at all, and now 95% of what I listen to doesn't have vocals. It just blew my mind, and it continues to blow my mind to this day. And damn, I wish I had some ability. I wish I could have written that for my wife. I wish I could have. Such a beautiful song. All right, finally, fourth year. This might end up being the shortest video I've ever done. <laughs> fourth year, 2016. Uh, you guys who've watched my videos from the beginning, beginning have all seen pictures of my daughter. I am very proud of her. She's two years old. I love her with every single beat of my heart. And the album I'm getting ready to show you, obviously, did not come out in 2016. But it's the Beatles' Abbey Road. What's significant about this is a couple of things. Sorry, I just started the memories. <laughs> the first day uh, that my wife and I brought her home from the hospital, the very first record I threw on for her was the Beatles' Abbey Road. It was the exact same album I was just holding in my hands. And I wanted her to hear it. It's like, I want this to be the first album she ever hears. And it was. And there are a couple of songs on there that are still relevant and important and have been always... I'm not a great singer, never have been, but I've been singing the song Golden Slumbers to her since she was born, to rock her to sleep, to calm her down um, during a diaper change, uh, just anything, any old situation really, and I think it is a beautiful song. And when I've seen her in the morning, first thing in the morning sometimes, I sing Here Comes the Sun to her, and she loves him. She does. She always gets a big smile on her face and Golden Slumbers has always calmed her down. And I love them. And when I think about that time in my life, 2016, an album that came out in 1969 is what easily meant the most to me at that point in time in my life. Um, I'll never forget this album. I'll never not own it. And I plan on telling my little girl forever, this is the first album you ever heard. These are the songs Daddy sang to you, and I want this copy to be hers. I'm going to make sure this one's hers. Hopefully she'll appreciate it. Growing up in this house, I like my odds of being able to get her to appreciate records. So, through my first car and my first job, through my high school graduation, through the day I got married and the year I got married, to the year and day 
November 12, 2016, that my little girl was born. Those are the four significant years in my life. And Bill, I really apologize for kind of bending the rules a little bit and going out on a limb. But again, I'm such a young man and most of the music I listen to is old, very old. I don't really listen to very much modern stuff. I couldn't name for you the most popular song on the radio right now. I couldn't. You could give me a thousand guesses. I couldn't name it for you. Um, but I hope I did your contest justice anyway, and I hope you still strongly consider my entry. Win or lose, I just wanted to let you know that I'm doing this because I love what you're doing on your channel. Um, I, I love it. And again, I kind of feel like, you know, you and I have kind of kind of come up through the vinyl community ranks together. And I enjoy your videos thoroughly. And... I love the knowledge and I'm going to keep watching and I hope you get to a, a thousand and three thousand and ten thousand subscribers, my friend. And even though I kind of pimped out the rules of your contest a little bit, I, I hope you still enjoyed it. And for those of you watching that have submitted entries, I hope you enjoyed it and good luck to you in the challenge. It's not about winning. So even though Lord knows I love winning, <laughs> I'm a competitive son of a gun. I always have been, but this is more so to participate in your challenge and to show my support for a great vinyl community member and a great vinyl community channel. Congratulations on the 300 subscribers, Bill. And for those of you watching my video who maybe aren't familiar with the vinyl verse and Bill and his challenge, go to the vinyl verse exactly as it's spelled, click on his channel video, get your rules or whatever and, su and submit one. Make sure you do. Uh, I know Bill would really appreciate it and he would love to see it and I'd love to see him as well. I've watched several others and I've really enjoyed them. So until next time, you guys, until next video, keep dropping that needle, you guys.